berkongsi hikmat serta ilmu yang akan diajar dan uh, dikongsi dikongsilah bersama uh, Mr Ryan dan harap kita akan sama-sama dapat uh, manfaat daripadanya dan dapat dipraktikkan apabila keluar dari sesi ini dan uh, saya ingin uh, menyeru kepada semua uh, rakan-rakan dan juga uh, peserta-peserta sekalian uh, mana-mana yang belum lagi menjadi ahli U Pustaka akan untuk menjadi ahli kerana terdapat berbagai faedah dan uh, manfaat ya yang didapati daripada penggunaan ni uh, mana-mana yang belum menyertai uh, menjadi ahli silakan kami alu-alukan uh, kerana uh, di dalam uh, yang pustaka itu terdapat uh, bahan uh, baca bacaan ataupun rujukan uh, yang lain selain daripada bahan fizikal iaitu uh, data yang boleh diakses di mana-mana sahaja kerana U Pustaka itu adalah uh, berasal daripada perkataan uh, Ubiquitous Library ataupun U Library dan uh, untuk menjenamakannya kepada platform yang ada di Malaysia ni kita uh, namakan sebagai U Pustaka uh, uh, Sebelum itu uh, saya ingin uh, uh, mewawarkan uh, untuk menjadi ahli U Pustaka semua peserta ataupun semua Uh, pengguna perlulah uh, mendaftar dengan uh, memasukkan ciri-ciri seperti berikut elemen yang terpenting iaitu terdapat lima elemen iaitu uh, nama seperti dalam IC, nombor kad pengenalan yang betul, uh, alamat terkini, uh, nombor kad pengenalan, nombor kad pengenalan ha? dan juga uh, email uh, untuk kita uh, uh, dapatkan detail-detail itu selain daripada uh, Selain daripada, selain daripada itu, kita perlukan juga uh, nombor telefon eh? Kalau boleh kita nak nombor handphone lah Sebab uh, mudah kita uh, berurusan sekiranya ada apa-apa masalah uh, yang yang berlaku lah dalam uh, sesi uh, pendaftaran tersebut Dan apa-apa uh, maklumat itu akan kami simpan uh, secara ni lah uh, Privasi masih ada lah dan jangan risau Kita tidak sebarkan ke mana-mana Dan uh, Selama, untuk selama dan kita harapkan dalam satu jam setengah ini kita akan sama-sama memanfaatkan uh, uh, apa tu peluang yang ada untuk uh, mendapat ya sedikit maklumat uh, bukan calang-calang uh, trainer kita pada hari ini ialah Mr Ryan Sellers ya dia daripada Manila uh, dan dia akan berkongsi lah dengan kita uh, macam mana uh, kita nak meneroka uh, penggunaan EBSCO host ni Okey, uh, sebelum itu saya uh, dan rakan akan uh, memas apa ya akan berkongsi lah sedikit uh, video pendek mengenai uh, pendaftaran uh, sebagai ahli U Pustaka. Silakan Puan Syafara. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okey, terima kasih Puan Syafara. Okey, tamat uh, video tu. Maka kita dengan uh, gembiranya, dengan segala hormatnya kita menjemput uh, Encik atau Mr. Ryan Sellers. Hello Mr. Ryan. How are you? Hello, are you ready for the presentation? Uh, yes, I am uh, excited to go. Uh, I, I hand yeah. this question to you. The floor is yours. Yeah, okay, thank you thank very you. much. Thank you, Ms. Rosemani. And good morning, everyone. And thank you for attending this session. I'm just going to quickly uh, share my screen and we'll proceed with this session. So I hope that everyone can uh, see my screen. Uh, could you uh, please confirm by uh, typing uh, one in the chat box? So uh, again, welcome to our uh, session on uh, digital exploration at U Pustaka 2023 at EBSCO host training. My name is Ryan and I am the training specialist for the region of Southeast Asia. So to start the session, I'd like to highlight the objectives for today. And it is my hope that by the end of this session, you'll be able to describe and access for Pustaka Negara Malaysia EBSCO resources via the EBSCO host platform, construct and apply a search strategies to locate information and research, refine uh, search results or uh, construct and uh, apply search strategies to locate information and research, and uh, refine uh, search results and access full text and do other request options. Use your My EBSCO folder to save, document, and share your research. We're also going to uh, touch on the EBSCO mobile app and we're going to download the EBSCO mobile app for Android or iOS devices. We're going to find and read resources on EBSCO mobile app and uh, finally locate relevant help and support materials. So before we start, I'd also like to show you uh, the uh, numerous advantages of using EBSCO resources over the free internet search. So as you can notice, by using EBSCO resources, you'll be able to provide more relevance or you'll be able to access relevant content or resources. You'll also be able to access authoritative content, provision for limiters and filters. You also have the ability to save searches and your search results, provision for citation assistance, various age appropriate interfaces, we also provide more accessibility, privacy, and finally provision for. So before we start, I'd also like to share with you uh, some tips and tricks that you can use to make your uh, searching easier and more efficient. So we have here something called uh, the Boolean operators. And uh, some of you might be uh, familiar with the Boolean operators but I'd like to uh, share the uh, purpose of using the Boolean operators. So we have here the AND, OR, and NOT Boolean operators, and these are used to, uh, or these are used as conjunctions to help you uh, combine or exclude a keyword. And we have here the AND Boolean operator, and I like to represent each Boolean operator of the Venn diagram is shaded and if we're going to use the end boolean operator what will happen here is anything that you'll uh, type in or any keywords that you'll type in in the uh, field codes so I have here leadership and management as my example and if we're going to use the end boolean operator the uh, system is going to into a uh, search for resources containing leadership and management, which will then help us to uh, narrow the uh, scope of our search. So aside from the end Boolean operator, you can also use uh, the OR Boolean operator. And the OR Boolean operator, on the other hand, will combine all of the keywords that will enter in the find field. And it's going to look for results containing either of the keywords that you'll enter. Now, in this case, it's going to a search for leadership or management, which will then 
help us broaden the scope of our search. And the last Boolean operator that we have here is called the not Boolean operator. And the, the uh, not Boolean operator is ideal to use if you want to uh, remove or suppress a, a specific keyword from your search result. So I'm uh, going to use my uh, same example. and just move on. if you like to remove ambiguity within the search results so these are the different boolean operators i hope this uh, the uh, boolean operators are clear but if you have any questions please feel free to uh, type in your questions or queries in the chat box and i'll be glad to uh, stop and accommodate any questions during the session so moving forward, aside from the Boolean operators, you can also use truncation, exact phrase, and parenthesis in searching on the EBSCOhost platform. So we have here the truncation, and we also refer to this as the asterisk wildcard. If you might be wondering how we can use this, it's really a straightforward and simple. You just have to enter the root of your term and uh, you can replace the last character or the letter with an asterisk wildcard. And it's going to look for, or the system is going to look for the variations from the root term that we entered. So in this case, it's going to look for syndrome, syndromes, and more. So aside from replacing a, a character or a letter, you can also use the asterisk wildcard to replace a word. So it's going to look for a string of words. So for example, I have here chief and officer, and I place the asterisk wildcard in the middle of the words chief and officer. So if you're going to do this, the system is going to retrieve records featuring chief financial officer, chief executive officer, chief medical officer, and so on. So that's the truncation. So the other thing that you can also do is enclosing your keywords in double quotation marks. So if you're going to uh, enclose your keywords in double quotation marks, the uh, system is going to uh, search for those words in that exact order. So aside from searching uh, the uh, keywords in its exact order, you can also use the uh, asterisk or the truncation here. So this search will retrieve uh, resources containing diplomatic relation, relationships, and uh, so on. And uh, the last tip and uh, trick that I'd like to share with you is the parenthesis. So we have here the, uh, or we have here the keywords enclosed in parenthesis. So if we're going to use the parenthesis, the uh, system will read the search string in parenthesis. So in this example, the system is going to search for resources on promotion or public health promotion. So this will be our first keywords and we're going to combine these keywords using the end bullet operator and we're going to type in Malaysia or Southeast Asia. So those are the different tips and tricks and I hope that's clear. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, type in your queries in the chat box. So uh, now that we know the different tips and tricks, I also want to share with you the uh, three essential steps for uh, searching and retrieving information on the EBSCOhost platform. So basically, we'd like to start by uh, thinking how we are going to structure our search or how we are going to frame our search. So in this phase, we're going to think of uh, the strategy that we're going to use so we can uh, either use the phrases, utilize the truncation, or use the Boolean operators. Now, after searching and structuring our search, we'll then apply filters and facets. So by the scope of our search, so that it's easier for us to scroll through the list and evaluate each item. So after uh, filtering or after searching and filtering, the last step would be finding and looking for the results. So in this phase, we can uh, do other things like 
look for the full text, add the results to our folder, and do other request options as well. So now that we know the uh, three essential steps, uh, the uh, next thing that we're going to do is proceed with the live demonstration. So before we uh, proceed with the live demonstration, I also want to uh, share with you the uh, different databases that you can access on your EBSCOhost platform. So if you are looking for something like the, uh, or uh, something that is relevant to general research, these are the databases that you can use. So we have here your Academic Search Premier, your Funk and Waggles uh, New World Encyclop Encyclopedia, Master File Premier, and the Topic Search. So aside from the general search, you can also access resources on business and technology. So you have here your Business Source Premier, Computer Source, your Regional Business News. And if you're looking for something like is uh, something that is relevant or related to education, you can uh, access your ERIC uh, subscription, primary search, your professional development collection. And lastly, if you uh, want to uh, search for resources on health, these are the databases that you can use. So you have here your AHFS consumer medical information, your Al. Now that we know that the uh, different databases that we can use on EBSCOhost, we can now proceed with the live demonstration. And if you want to follow along, you can access this link. So I'm just going to uh, click on this link. And the link in here is the uh, URL for your library website. So if you want to follow along, I'm just going to click on this link. And it's going to redirect us to the main landing page of your library website. So uh, from here, you can uh, scroll at the bottom. And you have here your online databases. So under the quick links, you can uh, click on the online databases. So I'm just going to quickly share the link with you. I'm just going to uh, share this one in the chat box. If you want to follow along, you can just access the link that I sent. So once you click on the link, you will be redirected to the online database. So from here, you can uh, click on the electronic journals, click on the submit button, and it's going to filter the results to And as you can notice, you also have here the instruction to access your EBSCO. And if you are accessing uh, the uh, EBSCO or the, uh, if you're accessing EBSCO within the vicinity of your institution, uh, you'll be able to seamlessly log in without typing your uh, email address or your uh, username and your password. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to access my internal account here and we're going to proceed with the live demonstration. So once you have successfully logged in, this will be your default landing page. And this is the EBSCOhost main landing page. So to start, I also prepared a cheat code here that you can uh, use to follow along. So we're going to uh, search for resources on diabetes. And we are also going to uh, limit our results to articles that are uh, published within the last five years and articles from academic journals. So to uh, start our search, I'm just going to quickly jump over to our browser or to my browser. From here, you can uh, just type in your keyword and I'm just going to type in diabetes. So one thing that you'll notice once you start typing your keyword, the system is automatically going to recommend you different terms that are related or relevant to your keywords. So you have your diabetes type 2, diabetes mellitus, and so on. So I'm just going to complete the keyword and type in diabetes. 
and continue by clicking on the search button here. So if you're following along, you should be able to uh, access 1.2 million plus search results. And this is really massive and it's actually going to uh, take us a lot of time to uh, scroll through the entire result. So uh, one thing that I'd also like to point out, uh, just in case you don't have the uh, same results, uh, please make sure that you uh, select all the databases and you can enable all the databases by uh, clicking on the Choose Databases tab. So from here, you can just click on Select All and click on OK. So uh, going back, as mentioned, we have here 1.2 million results. And as a researcher or as a user, I'd like to uh, bring down this number into a more manageable search results so that it's easier for me to scroll through the list. And to do this, you can uh, use the... Uh, uh, hi, uh, Atif. Uh, I think you were raising your hand. All right. So uh, if you have any questions, you can just uh, type in your theory or just unmute your microphone. Yeah, thank you. And going back, as mentioned, so to uh, help us bring down the number into a more manageable search results, we're going to uh, utilize the full on the left hand column of your screen so if we uh, go in this section you have here your uh, uh, different limiters so you can limit the results to full text and by clicking on the full text it's going to uh, suppress the results to articles that contain a uh, full text availability so aside from the full text you can also uh, click on the references available peer reviewed and if you're going to uh, click on the uh, peer review limiter it's going to uh, filter the results to articles that were peer reviewed or undergone the peer review process and uh, the uh, peer review process undergone a uh, a series of uh, evaluation and the evaluation is conducted by acknowledged experts in their field so aside from these limiters you can also adjust the results to a specific date by using the publication date limiter. So let's say, for example, you just want to retrieve articles that were published within the last five years. You can just change the year in here to 2019 to 2024. It's going to automatically apply that limiter to our search result. So aside from the publication date, you can also specify or click on the source type. So you have your different source types and you can access academic journals, magazines, news. And if we uh, click on show more, it's going to show up additional source types. So you have your ebooks, pamphlets, electronic resources, and so on. So I'm just going to uh, click on academic journals. So you can also see the number of resources that you can uh, access once you uh, click on this letter. So for academic journals, we have here 233,742 results. So I'm just going to update the uh, search results and apply that limiter. So aside from the source type, you can also access or use the uh, subject the source term limiter and your subject limiter. So if you might be wondering what is the difference between these two, well, the uh, subjects that are derived from the, uh, or the uh, subjects under the thesaurus term are if you hover over more, I'm just going to uh, refresh this one uh, quickly. So I'm just going to wait for the system to refresh the page and I'm just going to proceed with the other limiters. So aside from the subject resource term and the subject, so I think it has already refreshed. So again, 
uh, just a recap. So anything that is included in the subject discourse while the uh, subject that are included in the subject limiter are provided by the author or these are the author supplied subjects. So aside from the subject, you can also use the Lexal range limiter and the uh, Lexal range will measure the reading ability of the researcher or the user. You can also use the publication limiter if you would like to uh, search for a specific publication. You can also use the publisher limiter if you are searching for a specific publisher. You can also access the company language, geography, the North American industry classification system. And this limiter here is specific to different industries. And if you'd like to uh, click on show more, or if you click on show more, you'll be able to access the uh, complete list of the industry that is tied to the uh, topic that you are currently uh, searching. So the last method that you have here is the database. So it, it will just allow you to uh, limit the results to a specific database. So those are the uh, different limiters and filters. So before we proceed with the uh, search results, I'd also like to mention something called the bread box. So the bread box here will uh, show us all of uh, the uh, existing expanders as well as the limiters that we've applied for this current search result. So you have here your expanders and your limiters. And by clicking on the X icon, it's going to a uh, So going back to our search results, as you can notice, we have been able to bring down the search results to uh, 233,000 plus search results. So I'm just going to click on the full text as well. So it's going to uh, further narrow down the uh, search result. So you'll notice that this will uh, further be reduced into a more manageable search result. So uh, there you go. Uh, we have been uh, able to bring down the search results to just 112,000 plus results. And this is a significant decrease from what we had a while ago. And that's the advantage of using and the uh, filters and limiters. And uh, on the search uh, the uh, sorting option. So by default, the results here are sorted according to relevance. But you can also uh, change this one to date newest, date oldest, and so on. So on the page options, you have the option to uh, configure or adjust the uh, results that you will see per page. So if you uh, click on this drop down, you have here five as the minimum and 50 as the maximum. So aside from changing the results per page, you can also configure the result format, enable or disable the image quick view and the page layout. So the uh, share drop down here will uh, be uh, for the uh, folder. So if you want to uh, add the search results to your folder, you can uh, click on the uh, folder here and it's going to uh, save the search results to your folder. And I'm going to uh, further discuss this feature momentarily and I'm just going to skip this process or this feature now. So aside from adding it to your folder, you can also create an alert and the uh, purpose and advantage of creating alert, an alert is that it's going to help us save a lot of time because instead of uh, jumping in and out of the browser, you can just create an alert and you'll be able to receive a notification or an email uh, notifying you that there were uh, changes or updates for the search results. So the permalink in here will just re re retrieve the persistent link or the permanent link. And I highly recommend that if you'd like to uh, share the link with your uh, uh, friends or your colleagues, you can just copy this one and uh, send them or uh, send the link to them. Because if you're going to use the uh, URL that is generated by your browser, 
this one is temporary and it's going to expire after 24 hours. So those are the uh, different drop downs. And I'm just going to scroll through the list in here and access the uh, detailed record of the item. So I'm just going to uh, click on private insurance. to uh, show us the uh, detailed record. Mr. Ryan, you're online left. Uh, sorry. Uh, hello, uh, can you uh, see my screen? Yes, yes, you can see your screen. Yeah, thank you. So uh, I hope that everyone can uh, see my screen. So here is the uh, detailed record of uh, the uh, article or the item. And uh, you can uh, scroll through the list in here. And uh, as you can see, you have here the authors, your uh, subject terms, your NAICS or your industry codes. And you can also see the ISSN, your accession number and so on. So uh, you uh, have different options to access the full text so you can uh, click on the html full text and your pdf full text so these are the uh, different access points that do uh, that will enable you to access the full text of the article so uh, could you please confirm if you can uh, hear me clearly Come again, Mr. Ryan. We cannot hear you. Sorry. Hello, Mr. Ryan. Ah, uh, hello. Are you there? Hello. I'm just going to pick the uh, switch over to my phone, and I'm just going to connect to a, a different uh, internet or a different connection. Uh, this will be uh, just quick. So apologies. Uh, I think my uh, connection is, okay, I'm just going to, uh, hi everyone, uh, just checking if this is better. Yeah, much more better than before. All right, apologies. Yeah, so I'm just going to uh, go back again and, uh, so as mentioned, this will be your detailed record and you will be able to see your complete title or the uh, title of the article. And you can also see the uh, authors, the source and the uh, different subject terms. So in the detailed record, it's also going to show us the abstract of the article. So if I uh, go back in here, on the uh, left hand column of the screen this is where you can access the uh, different access points so you can access this one in html full text or in uh, pdf full text so i'm um, just going to access this article in pdf full text first and uh, i'm going to show you the difference between the pdf full text and the html full text So this is the full text version of the article. So I'm currently accessing this one in PDF full text. So from here, you have the option to print the article directly from the platform. So you can uh, click on the printer icon. And if you are connected to a local printer, you can also click on the drop down and uh, select your uh, printer's name. But if you're not connected to a local printer, you can just click on the save as PDF and you'll be able to save this article and read this one offline. So alternatively, you can also just click on the save icon here. So it's going to uh, do the uh, same uh, process or it's also going to allow you to uh, save this article and access this one remotely. So that's the uh, PDF version of the article. So as mentioned, we have two access options here. So we can uh, access this one in PDF full text and in HTML full text. 
So the advantage of using the HTML full text is that it's going to allow us to uh, translate an article to any language that is provided in this dropdown. So if I click on the dropdown, it's going to uh, show me the different languages. So for example, you'd like to uh, translate this one in, uh, let's say, Spanish. So I'm just going to click on Espanol here and click on translate. So the uh, system is going to automatically translate the article in Spanish. So the uh, length or the uh, translation process will depend on the length of the article that you are trying to translate. So if it's a longer article, it might uh, take a while. And uh, it's currently translating the article. So while it is translating the article, I'd also like to uh, mention that you also have different exporting tools in here. So you can uh, upload this article on your Google Drive. You can also upload this one on your OneDrive. And if you're using OneDrive, you can uh, just upload this on your OneDrive. You can also add this one to your folder, print this article directly from the platform, and you can also email this one. So uh, I'm just going to go back to the HTML linear. So as you can see, we have been able to translate the article in Spanish, and it has been translated by Microsoft. So before you use the translation, please make sure that you read on this disclaimer. And it says here that this translation was produced by an automatic translation program. And this is intended to be representative of the content in the original article. So it is also not guaranteed that it can produce a completely accurate translation. So there is a caveat here. So please make sure that you uh, read uh, this note here before you uh, use the uh, or access the translated version. So another tip that I'd also like to share with you. So if you want to uh, print the article in its translated version, you can uh, click on the ellipses here or the three dots that you uh, can find in your uh, browser's tools. So if you click on this one, you can uh, click on the print button. So it's going to uh, allow you to translate or print this article in its translated version. So I mentioned this one because if you're going to uh, click on the print icon or the print tool that is provided by the EBSCOhost, this will automatically translate the article back to its original language. So if I click on this one, it's going to uh, translate the article in English, which is its default language. So aside from uh, translating uh, the uh, article into any language, you can also listen to the content of the article if you are going to access the article in HTML. So here is the uh, listen button. So I'm going to click on this one and uh, someone will read the content for us. So I'm not sure if you're going to, uh, if you'll be able to uh, hear the reader, but I'm just going to uh, uh, try and uh, see if it's going to be uh, heard from your end. So uh, that's how we can listen to the content of the article. So another thing that you can also do is adjust the accent of the reader. And you can add, adjust the accent of the reader by clicking on the three lines here. So you have here the different reading voice or the accents. So you have your Australian accent, UK accent, and the US accent. So it also includes the name of the reader. So aside from changing the accent, you can also click and listen, enlarge the text, read this one in text mode. And by reading this one in text mode, you can, uh, you or it's just going to suppress the tools that we have here. You can also page mask this one. And this is a helpful feature, especially for the visually impaired learners. So the last option that you have here is downloading the content in MP3. 
So uh, that's how we can uh, access the content in HTML Fotex and in a PDF Fotex. So going back to the detailed record, as, as mentioned a while ago, you can also export the uh, detailed record using the uh, different exporting tools. So on the right hand side of the screen, you have here your Google Drive, OneDrive. You can also add this one to your folder. As discussed, you can also print this one and you can also email this one with your friends or uh, email this one to your uh, colleagues. So you can just type in their email address here. You can also save this one, grab the citation. So this is a helpful feature. And by uh, clicking on the site, it's going to uh, show you the uh, citation styles in or the citation format in nine different styles. So you can uh, scroll through the list for example, you'd like to use the APA 7th edition, you can highlight this text here and copy this one using your browser's copy function. So there is also a note here, if you're going to use the citation generated by uh, the platform, please make sure that you review the personal name, the capitalization, and the dates because the uh, data used to uh, cite this resource is not yet standardized. Therefore, you should always pay close attention or review those details prior to using the citation. And you can always consult with your library resources for the exact formatting and punctuation guidelines. So aside from grabbing the citation, you can also export the citation using the bibliographic management software. So you can, uh, export this one in EndNote, Zotero, Reference Manager, and so on. So you can also create note, and this is a note-taking feature which assist, assist you by allowing you to uh, take note for the, or uh, take note for this particular article. So you can uh, include a brief note here and click on save. So the last tool that we have here is the permalink. And again, this will just retrieve a, a persistent link or a permanent link. So the other two options here will just correspond to the HTML full text and we have already discussed this. And uh, the again, the listen will just, uh, will just allow you to listen to the content of the article while the translate will enable you to uh, translate the uh, article in a, a different language. So that's how we can uh, run a search using the basic search. So any uh, questions so far before we proceed? All right, so I don't think we don't have questions. So the next thing that we're going to do is run an advanced search. And the advantage of using an advanced search is that it's going to allow us to uh, build a multi-layered search. And this will also allow us to utilize uh, the uh, guided style fine fields, which will allow us to utilize the full codes and the Boolean operators. So I have here a research question. So the question is, how can organizations increase motivation in employees? So from the research question, we are going to extract the keywords that we are going to use and we're going to run an advanced search. So my concept, my first concept would be organization. Second concept would be increased motivation. And the last concept is employee. So to run an advanced search, we can uh, just going to go back to the uh, to my browser here and uh, if you're going to uh, run a new search please make sure that you uh, click on the new search button here because by clicking on the new search it's going to uh, remove all of the limiters and expanders that you've applied in your previous search once you uh, click on the new search it's also going to redirect you to the main landing page of the EBSCOhost platform. So here is the advanced search. So as mentioned, it's going to allow us to use the full codes and the uh, different Boolean operator here. So I'm just going to uh, type in our first keyword. So we're going to uh, type in organization. So we still have here the uh, responsive autocomplete feature. 
is going to type in organization. So for the second keyword, I'm going to enclose this in a double quotation mark and just going to type in increase motivation. So for the final keyword, I'm going to use employee. So before you run your search, you can also use a uh, filters or different filters here by scrolling a bit further. So you can also change the, cert, the uh, search modes as well as the expanders. And these are the different limiters that you can use before you uh, run your search. So you have your publication type, document type, and so on. So I'm just going to uh, click on the search button here. And we'll see uh, how many results it, it's going to uh, retrieve. So as you can see, we have been able to retrieve 1,000 plus search results. And this is slightly or uh, different from the uh, search results from the basic search. And that's the advantage of using the advanced search because it's going to allow us to retrieve a more specific search results and a more manageable search result as well. So if we scroll through the list, it's also going to highlight the keywords that we are searching for. So we have here motivation, employee motivation. And if you click on the detailed record, it's going to show us the subjects or the keywords. And these keywords are included in the subject, in the title, as well as uh, in the abstract. So uh, that's how we can run an advanced search. So the other thing that I'd also like to share with you is the field code. So by using the advanced search, you can also use the field code. And this will allow you to uh, construct in more advanced searches using the specific fields. So if we're going to use the field code, it's going to uh, suppress the results to uh, resources or uh, articles within the fields specified. So you can uh, utilize this one. So before I jump over to the browser, uh, here is the search example that we are going to uh, use for our field code. So we're going to look for uh, consumer reports and consumer reports is a publication that reviews products. And we're also going to uh, use the SO or the source field code. And in the second line search, we're going to add in a product. So in this example, we are going to search for vacuum and we're going to look for product reviews. Just going to jump back again, uh, please make sure that you click on the new search. So if you're following along, you can uh, click on the new search here and uh, you can now start typing your keywords. So for our first keyword, we're going to be typing a uh, consumer report. We're going to uh, click on the field code here and use the SO, which is the uh, source limiter or field code. And for our second keyword, we're going to be using vacuum or we're going to be typing a uh, vacuum in the uh, find field. So once we uh, type in all of the keywords, we're going to run a quick search and it's going to retrieve the results for us. So I'm just going to use the OR Boolean operator. I'm just going to uh, change my keywords here. So as you can see, it's going to retrieve a total of 800,000 plus results. So if we uh, scroll through the list and uh, click on any of the resource here, it's going to uh, show us the uh, detailed record. And we have here the vacuum. And it's also going to uh, show us the uh, source. And uh, that's how we can use uh, the uh, field codes so if you also want to access different field codes, so these are some of the field codes, but you can also access the comprehensive list of the field code by clicking on the help button here. And once we click on the help button, we can scroll at the bottom. 
we have here the database help and if i click on academic search premier so you can uh, click on any of the databases here depending on the uh, database that you are currently using so i'm just going to uh, click on academic search premier and if i scroll down we have here the different searchable fields so these are the different searchable tags the uh, description for each searchable tag and a uh, brief example for this tag so that's how we can uh, run a search using the uh, different field codes. So any uh, questions so far before we uh, proceed with the company profiles? All right, so uh, do we have any questions? You can continue, Mr. Ryan. Right. Yeah, thank no you. Question. Thank you. So the uh, next thing that we're going to uh, do is we're going to uh, run a search using the company profiles. So if you might be wondering what is a company profile, so uh, a company profile will uh, provide you with a company overview, and it's also going to include key facts, history of the company, and it's also going to include the SWOT analysis or the strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats of the company. And it's also going to show us information on top competitors and so on. So to access the company profiles, just going to uh, click on the new search. So to access the company profile, there is a tab here located in the middle of the images and more. So if we click on the uh, tab or the company profile tab, it's going to show us all of the company names and this is arranged alphabetically. So you can use the A to Z list to scroll through the uh, company profile. And if you're looking for a specific company, you can also just use the uh, fill code here and type in the company. So I'm just going to run a search using Apple and we're going to click on browse. So once we click on browse, it's going to retrieve the results for us. So you have your Apple Bank save for savings and we have here the Apple Incorporated. So in the search results, it's also going to show you the location of the company as well as, as, well as the industry. So to access the uh, full text or the complete report, you can uh, click on this PDF and the report is provided by MarketLine as uh, shown on your screen. So if I click on this one, it's going to show us the company profile for Apple Incorporated. So let's just wait for the system to load. So here is the company profile. And if we click on the table of contents, it's going to show us uh, the key facts, business description, history of the company. So you cannot uh, jump from one uh, content to another. So we have here the uh, key facts. And in the key facts, we're going to uh, see the phone, details on the web address, as well as the revenue in US dollar. And it's also going to uh, show us the financial year end and so on. So aside from the key facts, you can also access the SWOT analysis and it's going to show us the strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat of the Apple company. So aside from the SWOT analysis, you can also see the top competitors of Apple. So we have here Acer, BlackBerry. I can also see uh, Logitech and Samsung Electronics and so on. So uh, that's how we can use uh, the uh, company profile. So aside from the company profile, you can also uh, access different features using your EBSCOhost platform. So you can also search for uh, publications and by uh, searching for publications, you'll be able to find uh, journals, magazines, reports, trade publications, and so on. So by searching using the publication, there is also provision for you to search and browse within the journals. And you can also set up journal alerts to uh, stay on track 
of the uh, new volumes and issues. So to uh, search for different publications, you can uh, I'm just going to uh, jump over to the browser. And again, I'm just going to click on the new search. So on the uh, top toolbars, we have here the publications tab. And if we hover over this one, it's going to show us the different databases that we can use. So I'm just going to uh, click on Business Source Premier. And if you're following along, you can just use Harvard Business Review. So I'm just going to uh, type in Harvard Business Review and run a quick search. And it's going to retrieve the uh, results for us. It's go at a glance, it's also going to show us the bibliographic records, the uh, full text availability. So if I click on this one, it's going to show us the detailed record of the publication. So we have here the title, your IS, the ISSN, and you can also access different issues and articles by uh, going to the right-hand side of the screen. So we have here, if I scroll at the bottom, you'll be able to access the journal that, it, that was published in 1922. So I also mentioned that there is also provision to uh, search within this publication. And if we uh, click on the search within this publication, it's going to redirect us to the searching interface. So from here, you can uh, type in your keyword. So we're just going to uh, type in marketing and run a quick search. So it's going to retrieve results for us. And we have here the uh, results. So as you can notice, all of the results here are coming from Harvard Business Review. So I'm just going to go back. And the other thing that I'd like to uh, show you is how we can uh, set up an alert for this specific publication. So we can uh, click on the uh, share drop down here. You can uh, create an alert by clicking on the email alert here. So uh, please take note that if you haven't signed in to your personal user account, this will require you to sign in to be able to uh, set up or create an alert. So if you haven't signed in, there is a sign in button here. So you can uh, click on this one and you'll be uh, redirected to a page where it's going to ask you to sign in. So I'm just going to quickly sign into my account. So again, uh, it's going to prompt you to uh, log in. So you uh, just have to type in your username or your email address and type in your password. So, and if you uh, created your account using your Google email, you also have the option to continue with Google. And in case you haven't created an account, there is also the sign up button here. So if I click on this one, it's going to uh, show us this form. So you just have to uh, fill out this form and type in your first name, your last name, which is an optional field, your email address, and uh, you also have to create your password. So once you're done, you can just click on this box and click on create account. Alternatively, if you don't want to fill out the form, you can also continue with Google and use your existing Google account to uh, create an account. So once you have created your account, these are the benefits that you can uh, access or enable when, once you have signed in. So first is it's going to sync with your mobile app and it's also going to allow you to download eBooks, create projects and save your research and never worry about losing your search queries or documents again. So I'm just going to quickly sign in to my account and I'm going to uh, show you how we can uh, set up an alert.
So once you have signed in, it's now going to allow you to uh, create or set up a uh, journal alert. So in this field, you uh, just have to type in your email address or if you're planning to uh, set up an alert on behalf, excuse me, on behalf of someone, you can uh, just type in their email address here. And I'm just going to uh, use this one. So once you type in the uh, email address, you can now uh, save the alert and the uh, alert will be created. So uh, to double check if you have successfully created an alert, you can go to your folder in here or the folder icon. And once we're in the folder, it's also going to show us the uh, articles or the images or any uh, books that we uh, or ebooks that we uh, checked out. And it's also going to show us all of the uh, search alerts that we've created as well as the journal alerts. So in the journal alerts, you have here the Harvard Business Review. So we have successfully created the uh, journal alert. And if you want to, to uh, delete an alert, you can just tick on this box and click on delete items. So uh, that's how we can uh, search for the uh, publication. So another feature that I'd like to show you is uh, the uh, My Exco folders. So I've already uh, shown you the sneak peek, but uh, I'd like to uh, further discuss the uh, folder feature. So the uh, folder features are free to create and anyone can uh, create that provided that you have subscription to EBSCOhost. And you also be able to, uh, or it's also going to allow you to create and manage your uh, save searches, your search alerts, and your publication alerts. And you can also save your citations and even create customized folders and share your customized folders. So to access the folder feature, you can just click on the folder icon here. And once you're here, it's going to show you all of the items that, you, that you've saved in your folder. And if you scroll a little further, it's also going to show you all of the customized folders that you've created. So I have here some of my customized folders. And if you want to create a brand new uh, or a, a new customized folders, you can also uh, click on the new button here. And you just have to type in the uh, folder name. So I'm just going to uh, type in National Library of Malaysia. Once you uh, type in the folder name, you can also include a brief description and click on save. So once you uh, save the uh, customized folder, it's going to uh, create a customized folder for us. So we can use this one. So for example, I'm just going to uh, run a new search and type in online learning. So in the search results, as you can notice, we have here the folder icon preceding the title of the document or the resource. And if we click on the folder icon, it's going to show us all of the customized folders that we've created. And if I scroll at the bottom, we have here the folder for the National Library of Malaysia. And once you uh, save this item in your folder, the folder icon changes into a folder that has an item inside. And if we uh, go back to the folder here, it's going to uh, show us that we have successfully saved an article in our National Library of Malaysia customized folder. So uh, that's how you can uh, utilize the uh, folder feature. So you can, as mentioned, you can also share your customized folder by uh, clicking on the share button. So if you want to share this one with your uh, friends, you can just type in their email address here. You can also change the subject and include a brief message and click on the invite and the invite or the invitation will be sent to their email address. So that takes me to the end of the EBSCO Holes training. So before we, uh, and I also want to uh, 
quickly show you the EBSCO mobile app. So if you uh, might be wondering what is the EBSCO mobile app, uh, the EBSCO mobile app will allow you to conduct your search and research process whenever you are. So it's a remote access and it's going to uh, also allow you to find and connect your to your library and then you can just simply search, choose and use your library's content. So you can uh, download the app, so the app is free. So you can uh, just scan the codes here. So if you're using the App Store or the uh, Apple device, you can just scan the uh, code for the App Store. And if you're using an Android device, you can just scan the uh, Google Play in here. So uh, please feel free to scan the codes and download the uh, app. And if you'd like to uh, follow along. Uh, hi, uh, Mond Resman. Uh, I think you're raising your hand. So again, uh, you can just scan the code. So once you have downloaded the, uh, the app, this will be your main landing page. So I'm just going to quickly uh, switch over to my uh, phone and I'm going to uh, quickly share my screen and proceed with the uh, live demo. So I hope that everyone can see my phone screen. So I'm currently uh, sharing my screen. So as you can notice, I have already uh, downloaded the EBSCO mobile app. And if I tap on this one, it's going to, uh, so I'm just going to quickly uh, sign out and I'm going to walk you through the process on how you can uh, sign in. So from the uh, main landing page of the app, you can uh, tap on uh, get started. So once you uh, type or once you uh, tap on the get started, it's going to uh, show you the uh, field code in here or define field. So you can uh, search for your institution using the uh, name of your institution, the postal code or the city. And you can also use the uh, use my location. And if you're accessing the app within the vicinity of your institution, you can uh, just use the uh, geolocation. So I'm just going to uh, tap on the find field here and you can uh, type in your institution's name. So we have here the National Library of Malaysia. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to use my uh, demo account and I'm going to uh, just I'm just going to go uh, quickly uh, sign into my account. So once you have signed in, this will be the main landing page of the EBSCO mobile app. So by default, if you have authenticated using your institutional login details, the app will recognize you as, anonym, as an anonymous researcher, but you can uh, tap on the uh, person icon here, and there is a button here where you can uh, sign in. So if you tap on the uh, sign in button, it's going to ask you to uh, sign in using your personal user account. So once you have signed in to your personal user account, you'll notice that your name will appear on the upper left-hand side of the screen. So I'm just going to go back. So we have here my name, it says, welcome Ryan. So it's also going to include the name of your institution. So in the uh, main landing page, 
it's going to show you all of the uh, resources that you've recently viewed. And we also have here the recommended for you or the uh, recommendations. And this is a brand new feature that we recently released on the mobile app, wherein it allows users to explore related content based on the articles that they have recently viewed in the uh, mobile app experience. So aside from the recommendations, we can also see the uh, discovery or the recent subjects that we've conducted. So to uh, conduct a search, you can also just simply tap on the magnifying glass, and this will allow us to enter our search terms in the uh, search box. So I'm just going to use diabetes again as our example. So we still have here the, authors, the uh, autocomplete feature. So I'm just going to uh, tap on diabetes. and it's going to retrieve the results for us. So from the search result, you can also use any limiters. So you can tap on the peer reviewed limiter, the full text limiter. You can also uh, tap on the O dates and this will allow you to uh, suppress or limit the search results to a specific date. So aside from the O dates, you can also uh, tap on the source type so if you want to access or just browse the ebooks, you can uh, tap on the ebooks and click on apply. So it's going to uh, automatically uh, retrieve the results for us. And uh, hi, Selena, are you raising your hand? So uh, I'm going back. Uh, this will be the uh, search results. So we have here the uh, ebooks. So these are the different ebooks on diabetes. And if we uh, tap on any of the title here, it's going to show us the bibliographic details of the ebook. So you have here the uh, complete title of the ebook. It's also going to show us the abstract, the uh, detailed record, or the uh, details about the ebook. So you have here the authors, the document type, and so on. So it's also going to show us the availability. So this will depend on your institution. So for my institution, I have here three copies available. So meaning it's going to allow me to uh, download or access this ebook. So the more like this in here will just uh, essentially show you any relevant ebooks or resources for your topic. So if you want to access or read this one in full text, you can uh, tap on the uh, access options and you have two options. You can either read this one online or download the ebook. So if we uh, tap on the read online, it's going to uh, allow us to read the content online. And uh, let's just wait for the content to load. So here is the uh, full text version of uh, the ebook. And you can uh, scroll through the uh, content by uh, tapping on the arrows here, located on the lower left-hand corner of your screen. So that's how you can uh, move through the pages. And you can also zoom in or zoom out by tapping on the uh, positive or negative icons. But you can also just pinch the screen and it's, well, it's going to automatically uh, zoom in the content. So if we uh, click on the three dots in here, it's also going to allow us to uh, grab the citation of this ebook. And these are the different citation that we have here. You can uh, click on the uh, drop down here and select the style that you want to use. And you can also export the citation. So aside from grabbing the citation, you can also share this one by uh, grabbing the persistent link, or you can also email this one to your colleagues or to your friends. And you can also see the details, the table of contents, and you can also search within. And if you're looking or trying to search for a specific keyword, you can uh, just type in the uh, terms here.
So it's going to show us all of the keywords that is available here. So it yielded a total of 1,118 matches. So uh, that's how we can uh, search within and that's how we can uh, or that's how we can access the ebook or the resource online. And the other option that you can also do is download the ebook and access this one remotely. So if you tap on the access options, you can uh, click on the download ebook. So once you uh, click on the download ebook, it's going to ask you for uh, to. Uh, set the number of days that you want to borrow the uh, ebook so this will depend on the preference and configuration of your institution so i have here the max a maximum of 30 days so i'm just going to borrow this one for two days and tap on download ebook so this won't require me any uh to uh, download any software like the uh, adobe digital editions and this will also allow me to uh, read the content of this ebook remotely and without having the need to connect to a Wi-Fi or uh, enable my, my uh, mobile data. So it's just loading the uh, content for me. So it might uh, take a while depending on the length of the ebook. So I'm just going to go back and just going to double check if I have downloaded any ebooks here. So you can also double check or check or access all of your uh, downloaded ebooks by uh, tapping on the bookmark icon here. So it's going to show you your uh, saved items as well as the ebooks that you've checked out. So if I tap on this one, So uh, unfortunately, the uh, the content is not uh, properly loading. But essentially, once you downloaded the ebook, you'll be able to access it here. And it's also going to show you uh, the information when it is going to expire. So that uh, takes me to the end of my uh, presentation. So uh, do you have uh, any questions so far? Or is there anything that you want to know that we haven't covered yet before we proceed with the uh, quiz? I think Mr. Ryan, they are waiting for the quiz. Yeah, I think they're all excited for the quiz. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, all right. So without further ado, let's now proceed with the uh, quiz. And... Uh, I'm just going to discuss the mechanics for the quiz. So there will be uh, 10 questions from the topic that I have discussed, and you must answer all of the questions within 10 minutes. And whoever finishes the quiz with the highest number of correct answers within the shortest period of time will win the prizes. So there will be uh, 10 winners, and these 10 winners are comprised of three grand prize winners and seven consolation prizes. So the winners will be uh, contacted after the session. So please make sure that you indicate your name and your email address. So you can just scan the code and proceed with the game. So uh, good luck, everyone. And I'm just going to start the timer. So I'm going to uh, set uh, 10 minutes for this quiz and the uh, yeah, timer starts now. Good luck, everyone. Mohon semua peserta scan ya barcode tu. Scan QR code, barcode, sorry. QR code untuk menjawab soalan kuis yang disediakan. Gulak semua.
ಗೊತ್ತಾದು Good luck, everyone. You still have six minutes to uh, complete the quiz.
Is that Ryan? Are we ready to announce the winner? Hello. Hello. Um, yeah, I think we can now. I can now retrieve the uh, winner. So please yeah. uh, just give me uh, one minute to uh, finalize the uh, result. All right. All right. Yeah, thank thank you. you. So I have the uh, winner with me or the winners, and I'm just going to uh, share my screen and show you the uh, top three winners or the grand prize winners. So we have here for our uh, first, we have here uh, Noor Suru uh, Yawati Kaling. So congratulations, you uh, got the perfect score, 10 out of 10. And for the second one, we have Muhammad Sariza. And the uh, third grand prize winner is Zalinda Binti Ali. So congratulations to uh, the top three winners. And the following congratulations. congratulations, everyone. And the uh, remaining are the consolation uh, prize winners. So these are uh, Ros Fatima Wasi, uh, uh, Ros Fatima, and uh, uh, Sorry, Rosmani, would you like to uh, pre present the uh, name of the winners? Uh, for uh, the consolation prizes, yeah. the winner is, the winner are Ros Fatima Wasli, Nor Hafiza, Nor, Mar, Nor Madina, Farah Haida, Azwan bin Asharuddin, Nurul Adilah, and Nor Hasniza Medika Marudin. Taniah kepada pemenang, and tiga pemenang utama, and taniah kerana apa? Terima kasih kerana menyertai uh, sesi uh, eksplorasi digital pada kali ini. Uh, to you, Ms. Ryan. Congratulations, everyone. And again, you will be uh, contacted after this session. So, uh, and uh, I'm just going to send the name of the winners and you'll be contact contacted yeah. after this session. Okay. So, uh, thank you and congratulations, everyone. And I yeah. hope that you found this session uh, useful. So, before we wrap up, I'd also like to uh, share my... Uh, my email address here so if you have any questions in the future please feel free to reach me at ryan salas at epsco.com so thank you again everyone and uh, congratulations to the winner and thank you miss rosmani for having yeah. me i thank enjoyed you. the session yeah thank, thank you, you very ryan. much thank you thank you for your great information and a wonderful sharing with us uh, today and um it's, 
Itu saja daripada kami uh, pada uh, saya, Rosmani Tengudin, mewakili uh, bahagian sumber elektronik Perusahaan Negara Malaysia. Ucapkan terima kasih kepada semua peserta yang telah menyertai sesi eksplorasi digital U Pustaka 2023 pada kali ini bersama EBSCO Host dan juga kepada uh, pemenang-pemenang yang telah memenangi ya, hadiah-hadiah yang terdorakan. Taniah semua dan kami pihak kami akan menguruskanlah uh, urusan uh, hadiah itu nanti. Okey, jumpa lagi semua. Terima kasih. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Uh, Cik Ros, yang hadiah tu yeah. ambil masa sedikit. Uh, ah, yeah, kita yeah. tunggu uh. daripada ex-co-host hantar daripada oversi kepada kami. Hadiah tersebut barulah uh, Perpustakaan Negara Malaysia akan allocate lah uh, kepada pemenang. Minta bersabar okay. ya kalau lambat sikit. Ya, yeah, kalau ada apa-apa masalah uh, sila berhubung dengan kami lah. Di unit uh, di bahagian uh, sumber elektronik. Jumpa lagi semua. Jumpa lagi pada sesi akan datang. Terima kasih. Saya sudahi dengan wabillahi taufiq wa hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.